Hey everybody, David Markarian here from iVision. I've got a very special person on the phone here today, on the phone, on Skype, where it's 2014. The perfect patient funnel system, the creator of it, Dr. Josh Wagner, who's also in practice in New York City, right? Exactly, David. Everyone's afraid of that, but you're doing it and you're doing very well at it. He is one of the future thought leaders, and he's got some of the greatest things to say to you today, and that's why I want you listening to him. And listen closely. Josh. Uh, thanks, David. Thanks for having me, and completely endorsed for all the beauty lawyers, chiropractors out there for what you've produced in the myovision of having objective data that's visual for the patients to see progress, whether it's courtrooms, referrals, anything out there, I completely endorse it. So thank you for how you're helping the profession also. You're very welcome, Josh. As you said, I'm in practice in New York City, in Manhattan, which for many people is scary. And I was scared before going into it also. I did not plan on it. It fell in my lap. And what I developed in my first few years of practice was a really profitable, well-oiled machine that I wasn't working on weekends, I wasn't doing screenings all the time, and a lot of it is what I've learned to do inside the practice in communication that's very different and distinct than what I see most practitioners learning or teaching in the field because I devoured all of that in my early years during uh, graduate school and showing you what is different and in the, in the perfect patient funnel system I show people and chiropractors but I'll share some insights insights right now that can make a difference of you going into practice tomorrow or in an hour from now after watching this right now let me I want to emphasize this because the communication stuff you're talking about is is so different than what I've seen in general in the past the only other person I've seen do stuff like this Frank Savinsky's work was very was was also focused on that, that communication and 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 what you're doing really is you're dealing with the patient as an intelligent individual and it's it's extremely unique the way you've you've found ways so tell us a little bit more about how you actually do it what's the what's your secret to this whole thing sure so one of the let's just say founding principles is instead of trying to take this patient this completely empty vessel of chiropractic understanding and shove patient education into them even if it's through the Socratic method, even if it's through personality types, it's trying to get to mold them into some way that is opposite of what they're coming to you for. So the real understanding is acknowledging the patient for where they are and guiding them through a process on their terms rather than thinking your day one, two, or three is going to impart on them what you took all of graduate school to understand, all of your seminars to understand, possibly your healing miracles to understand. You know, every chiropractor has come to their own philosophy and understanding differently, but it's almost never happened in a day one, two, or three process. And to realize that unless you have a practice where your patients are enrolling for chiropractic school after your lay lecture, or after your report of findings, or after your three days, you're not transferring what you think you actually are. And it's one of the reasons there's not as many referrals or reactivations in the field. And I'll tell you, over the past 30 years has been the easiest time to grow an individual chiropractic practice as well as change the scope of how chiropractic is viewed by the general public. A lot of it is because most people had very great or unlimited insurance reimbursement. Right. And in that time period, the percentage of Americans under care really hasn't changed. The credibility of chiropractic hasn't changed that much. You know, if anything, things like David has created is helping that more than any of the communication, verbal communication that we're imparting. So I say that because we've dropped the ball in some respects. Mm -hmm. We're missing something. And again, it's thinking that what we have up here in a few days or a few sentences or the correct report of findings is going to make the difference in them understanding and wanting what you want. Right. So if I could say one thing, it's if you come with the preference of interacting with every new patient as you want what they want, and you're the medium, you are the missing link mm -hmm. for them getting what they want, mm -hmm. through your recommendations, through your care, your practice will start to evolve and profoundly change rather than you putting on the patient what you want for them, and them coming in for one thing, you trying to educate or convince them to want something totally different, which is what the profession has done over the past 30 years. And what I find is that practices that market the hardest and are the most aggressive will see increase, but you don't want to have to be doing that after a few years in practice of spending weekends on the street doing screenings or always doing talks or doing lengthy, lengthy report of findings. 
You don't have to do that if you come through it through a more elegant, sophisticated way of sharing with people that you are the solution for what they're looking for, you're the missing link, and that's what I get into in the Perfect Patient Funnel System and certain questions to ask and how to frame your care. Got it. That, that's actually brilliant. What you're really talking about is optimizing the practice for 2014, not 1986. Exactly. And most practitioners, January 1st, 2014 hit, you saw a drastic decline. Whatever realm of insurance reimbursement, reimbursement you are engaged in, in-network, out-of-network, even if you're cash, right. most people know what their deductible is. And most, most people want to know what they're going to be reimbursed because right. even if they're paying you straight, they still deserve to get reimbursed if they have the uh, reimbursement. And to understand that insurance isn't an evil entity, it's how you decide to engage with it. And if you're not going to be reimbursed, then it's the practitioner's due diligence to create a practice where they're getting paid. Right. Um, but bottom line is, like you said, it's, it's almost 2015 now. It's never going to get any better. So right now is the time to start learning the new tactics, what right. I call new era chiropractic. Right. Instead of thinking heavier education, more forceful education, more education is going to turn the tide because it's not my opinion. Just look at the stats over the past 30 years. Everyone is preaching pretty much the same thing through a different personality, right. and it hasn't changed. Right. So I'll give you a quick three lessons on what you could be doing when you go into practice in an hour, tomorrow, whenever it is That's you're watching great. this. That's what I want to see. I was going to ask you that next, so great. Yeah. So let's say for your new patient consult, this understanding, when, again, I, we talked about you've created this ideal script, this ideal what you're imparting to the new patient, and you're delivering that, and when it goes into their ears, they're not hearing, they're not absorbing right. what you have intricately trained on, come to your own conclusions, figure it out is your uh, story, is your message, your philosophy, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, whether you're super straight, whether you're therapeutic, does not matter. They're not actually hearing what you're saying mm -hmm. until you show them that you've fully listened to them. And that's one thing where chiropractors drop the ball is we don't really listen, whether we're anti-symptom or we're just so staunch of we have to get them to understand, we don't listen to people. Mm -hmm. And when we don't listen, they don't listen to you. Right. So let people speak in that consult, even if you're not going to use your their symptoms mm -hmm. as your care protocol. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It's customer service and it's building a relationship. Mm -hmm. So three things you have to be doing when you're letting a person speak is remember the words they're using, especially the most impactful, dramatic, whether it's verbs, adjectives, when they talk about that excruciating sciatica, if you don't say excruciating sciatica, they won't feel like you actually heard them. Or if you change it and say stabbing sciatica, because in your mind, stabbing equals excruciating, it doesn't in their mind. They use the words they're using for a very specific reason, mm -hmm. whether it was subconsciously or consciously. And when you reiterate back, the, the, the most uh, impactful, energetic words that they used, they remember that, and that'll cause the first step in engaging with, wow, this doctor actually listened to me, he actually cares what I said, and then the next two steps will bring you even more connection. Right. So, and I don't want you to get confused that repeating back their words is being robotic or parroting. It's not. It's not at all. It's called it's validation. Like, You're yeah, validating. It's, it's, the gist of what they said and reiterating it, not word for word, but making sure to include those buzzwords right. that aren't thrown away around every day. Right. The next one is letting the person know you understand how this is making them feel. And not feel in the symptom sense, but feel in the emotional sense. Okay. Because this takes a person from, does this doctor listen and care what I'm saying, to does this doctor actually understand how I feel and actually care about me. Right. And that's a whole other level of them getting closer to no matter what your recommendations may be, saying, okay, when can we start? Right. And oftentimes women and females are more open to saying, you know, I'm just so frustrated. Every morning I wake up with this headache. So mm -hmm. it's not that, I'm not talking about the feeling of the headache, the emotional feeling. Or, you know, I had a patient last week, this was a girl in her late 20s who had fibromyalgia and a host of symptoms, but the word she used was not frustrated, but but scared. Mm -hmm. Like she's scared that she's only 28 and she's got all this stuff going on and in her timeline it's only getting worse. So that's what she's feeling. Mm -hmm. And so looking for that and if, you, if they don't say it, asking the right questions to get that out of them right. and then letting them know 
that you heard that, you understand they're scared. Right. And whatever, you know, this isn't a script, this is a template, a process of how to best connect with someone. Right, absolutely. Now the third stage, because a lot of people understand or they've heard, use the words, use the emotion, you, most people have heard of that. Whether you're using them, totally different story. Right. But if you do use them, night and day difference, as simple as it sounds. Right. The next aspect is the third, what I call the third essential, and that is really understanding what their end result is. And again, let's say that woman comes in with excruciating sciatica. The end result isn't just, I want the sciatica away. The end result is, what's missing in their life because of the sciatica right now that they can't ah, have? Right. Now, that might be a full night's sleep. And then it goes deeper than that. What happens when they don't get a full night's sleep? Mm -hmm. They don't have as much energy and they're crankier the next morning. And maybe they take that out on their little kids or they right. take that out on their husband or they're not as sharp and clear at work and there's less of a chance of getting them at that promotion. Mm -hmm. So now it's having a financial impact, it's having a family impact, it's having a peace of mind impact. So it's getting deeper, which should be mm -hmm. chiropractic, vitalistic oriented, deeper than the sim symptoms, deeper than the injury, deeper than the diagnosis of how does this really impact their life and asking the correct questions to get there and finding out not just that this is scary, but what is all the areas this is impacting? And then, this is the key, this is the missing link, showing how your care brings them to getting that back in their life, what's most important, the connection with the husband, the better quality of work at, at work, uh, sleeping through the night, peace of mind, rather than all of your recommendations catered to an angle of their spine, subluxation correction, which that may be your intent and your goal, and that's fine, but how you communicate it to the person has to be in their world. Right. And when you make those subtle shifts, so when you start talking to people, always using the three essentials, mm -hmm. it takes the person from this doctor listens to me, right. this doctor cares, this, under, this doctor understands what I want, right. and this doctor can give me what I want because you are creating all of your recommendations and education through giving them their end result, that third essential. So right. when you learn how to package this, it doesn't happen overnight, but literally if you start doing just the words and the emotions mm -hmm. and in some way, shape or form mixing in the end result, right. you'll see differences in how people respond to you. Right. You'll see less of the glossiness go over the eyes mm -hmm. of your patients when you know you keep speaking right. and you know you've lost them. Right. Or the shutters going over the ear, ears right. where you know in 30 seconds they couldn't repeat anything you just said. Yep. And you'll start seeing people start asking, you know, when can I begin, rather than in their own mind thinking, is this the doctor for me, right. or is this going to work, which is many new patients' internal dialogues. Right. You'll, start, you'll start seeing people want to refer more, even before they get the results, even mm -hmm. before you ever put your hands on them, because they've never had a connection with a healthcare provider like that before. Right. And it all starts with the very first visit. So that's a sample of the communication strategies, like the, the frame the base framework right. that everything in the perfect patient funnel system builds upon with a lot more specificity, clarity, showing you how to do it, to just have a gentle conversation that changes how people perceive you and it makes it so your finances, your fee your your fees, your location, your insurance reimbursement and your hours aren't a reason to complain. Right, exactly. What's brilliant about it to me is a few things. One of them, I have a master's in psychology, so I understand the, the need for validation. Even a child wants can't the chocolate bar, you say to them, of course you love chocolate, chocolate's great, and then you redirect them. So the validation part's really important, but what's really brilliant about it is it's so simple. Mm. It makes it so much easier on the practitioner because you don't have to have the same scripted consult, report of findings that I used to do tons of screenings when I was in graduate school, right. and I would leave and I'd have a headache, I'd have the same conversation 60 times, right. the same exact one, right. my jaw would hurt, my head would hurt, and many practitioners I know are like that in practice mm -hmm. where it's just, they're a robot, they're on right. autopilot, patients can sense that, they know, especially now more than ever, Boy. Uh, now that communication is mainly through text and email, and verbal, one-on-one, -on -one, in person, is at right. the lowest it's ever been, Right. People are more perceptive because they don't get it as much. Right. And when they take their head out of the phone and they're talking with you, if you're scripted, people can tell. And it's the it's one of the biggest factors that repel people away from trust, referrals, and yes, I want to go forward with you. Right. So 
it, it makes it so much easier on the DC. Without question. And it's great because you know, you're making it easier for the patient, you're making it easier for yourself, and then your results are better in terms of what most practitioners are most interested in, yeah. conversions, referrals, number of visits, all that. You're, you're gaining a real loyal supporter uh, rather than someone who's skeptical yes. or only comes for your initial care plan, and then you never see them again, you've never gotten a referral, and you don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. This is actually what's happening over the past bunch of years in the profession, right. is thinking that just education and saying the right words to convince them or educate them is the answer. Unfortunately, it's not. No, and, and the truth is that the, you can talk to your blue in the face, that there's this thing called the enlightenment effect. What you're describing is that the entire patient base now is enlightened. They know that you're reading a script. They can sense that it's lacking in authenticity. They can, they know this, and they they're repelled by it. And I hear it all the time. The biggest complaint I hear about chiropractors is they feel like they're reading from some script. They they know it. They can sense it. And because yeah. the, the the doctor's not listening exactly, what you said they're not listening to what they're saying, and they're just trying to make them fit into a you know put a round peg in the square hole and feel like the the more you do that, the better it is. And it's not true. And absolutely. And yeah. and. It's, it's twofold. It's not just that doctors are being robotic and scripting and getting tired of that, but, but worse, I find in this profession more than others, is that many doctors are scripting and saying things that they're not fully congruent with, right. but they're doing it because this coach or this stage speaker told them this is what right. works, don't deviate. And that's another thing. People know when you're scripting, right. but people also know with subtle aspects of how you, you speak, how you hold your head, if you're not in congruence with what you're saying. Right. So that's nothing that you can defend against or that's nothing that can be, be trained. Mm -hmm. It'll be how you hold your chin, it'll right. be how, how you hold your shoulders, the tone of your voice, the speed, and people pick up on that and they won't think, oh, he's lying or he's not telling the truth, right. but they'll just feel a disconnect. Right. And that along with, it doesn't, it feels like he's scripting, like he's in his head. Right. That's why conversions are often very low in chiropractic. It's not just the a, a sure. low quality new patient. Sure. It's the quality of the connection you formed from the very first second. So how do they how are they going to learn this from you? Because the truth is, what you're doing is truly brilliant. It's very subtle. It's very uh, sophisticated. And the truth is, anyone can really learn. Anyone can really learn to do this because it's really built into us. It, we actually are going against our nature to learn how to give them things they don't want to hear. So how do they reach you? How do they, how right. can they help, you can help the doctors, tell, tell them. The easiest way is weekly, I do a, a complimentary, it's called the number one Cairo webinar. And you can go to it, the website perfectpatientfunnel.com, sign up to be on the webinar. Mm -hmm. And I go, I do an hour long webinar exactly on this. So every time I do a webinar, I get emails the next day. And I'm in New York from chiropractors in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, all throughout the country. And it's, it's rare that a time goes by where I don't get at least one email from someone on it saying, I used what you said just from that hour webinar, yep. and I started getting hugs from patients yep. who don't normally hug me. Yes. Or I started getting patients saying, you know, telling me, like telling the practitioner, this is how many times they need to come in, mm -hmm. rather than saying, I need to think about it, or I need to ask my husband. So the change could be immediate, and then the more you practice it, the more you train on it, the more you get comfortable, it just expands the results. Right. So perfectpatientfunnel.com, you can get on the number one Cairo webinar. I also send out videos and daily emails. You can just get on my email list mm -hmm. where I give you a 20 minute recorded three essentials PowerPoint video presentation. So you mm -hmm. can watch it at any time mm -hmm. and just, again, train yourself. And right. so the reason I created this first was to make a real difference in not only for chiropractors in the field, but also for the general public how they perceive chiropractic. Right. Because the second the public starts feeling more trust and more credibility of the profession, the more people are going to passively be coming to your office and to all chiropractors' office. So all of this is just as beneficial for the public as it is for you, as it is for your practice growth and success. Mm -hmm. And you'll see the weight come off your shoulders mm -hmm. and your patient's shoulders when they just realize wow, this doctor gets me, Right. I can trust him, yep. he wants what I want, and it's not about the fees, it's not about the visits, it's not about the care plan, it's about giving them what they want through your best recommendations as you are the missing link to getting what's most important in their life. And it's, it's great when you're doing that because it's like, you don't have to grind it out anymore. And, right. that, and that's what I hear mostly from, if you, you can look at the testimonials 
on the website Perfect Patient Funnel mm -hmm. and see chiropractors from all over the world with similar uh, sentiments, which right. is practice is getting so much easier right. and I'm seeing increase. Right. Like, what, what more could you ask for? Well, I, I really want everyone to go to your website. I want them to, to, to understand that this is the only way this, that things are going. We need a paradigm shift right now. And what you're describing is that paradigm shift that's needed because you know you know the JD Powers thing showed us at the bottom of the list of healthcare providers, and the reason is exactly what you're describing. The solution to that problem to bring this us up in in the world is exactly what you're describing. So please, everybody, I want you to uh, visit Josh Josh's website and and actually contact him about getting some help with this because he can actually teach you to do what he's doing and uh, relatively quickly also. So uh, please do. And uh, Josh, I want to thank you for being on today and. Uh, uh, seriously, uh, the, the mindset you have is something I want everybody to start integrating. Uh, if we want to see ourselves grow as a profession and raise a, the level of professionalism in our profession. So thanks a lot, Josh. Cool. Dave, thank you for having me and Great. for allowing DCs to see this who may have not have seen it other, any other way unless they were a MyVision client, mm -hmm. customer, supporter, and, and are on your website. So I thank you a lot. Thank you very much, Josh. Bye now. Bye.